It was a time of chaos on Midgard. After the once mighty Romans deserted their northern fortresses, long before the Christians brought the dreaded Ragnarok, it was the age of heroic deeds. It was the age of the Norsemen. In ancient Scandinavia, locked away from the warmth of the civilized world by the icy barrier of the North Sea, warriors and heroes fought valiant battles and sought the favor of their gods and an honorable seat in Valhalla, the hall of Odin the Allfather. This is the world of Hammer of the Gods. Not satisfied simply to win their place in Valhalla, the four mightiest kings of the Norse world, one a friend of trolls, the other of dwarves, the third of elves, and one dweller only among mortal men, are brought before Odin in a dream. By completing quests offered them by all the lesser gods of Asgard, they can win a place for all eternity in the Skaldic lore. One of them will triumph and be known as the Hammer of the Gods. With this basic premise, a new kind of God game was built. Hammer of the Gods is primarily a strategy game, but there are elements thrown in from nearly every other genre, and not merely as window dressing. In Hammer of the Gods, you play the king of one of four major factions in ancient Scandinavia. None too rich or powerful, you must carve your empire slowly, forming raiding parties of Vikings to go out to nearby coastal villages to attack them. Once you've successfully taken it down, you are given the option of how to deal with it. You can raid, plunder, or raise it. Each option is a trade-off in terms of damage to the town and wealth taken from it. Some sites can also be reclaimed and colonized by your swordsmen and archers. By carefully raiding and plundering, you can amass a fortune without completely cutting off the hand that feeds you. But Hammer of the Gods isn't a game of mindless conquest and pillage. Each of the four sides has a different condition for victory. The Vikings who are allied with the dwarves must amass wealth. Those with the elves must amass population. The troll friends must develop their military might, and the lone humans need to collect all of the magic that can be found. And beyond these four principal paths, there is the quest tree, the real core of Hammer of the Gods. Each of the many gods of Asgard will demand of you something different, and each completed request will grant you new favors and gifts. Each will lead to more quests and more choices along the ever-branching tree of more difficult tasks. All of these differences in required playstyle will lead to more replay value than you've seen in a game in a long time. And to add to it, each of the quests can be completed in dozens of different ways, and the game map, a realistic representation of ancient Scandinavia, can be replaced with realistic random maps to create a new kind of game. Battles are directed piece by piece on this battlefield representation, and dragons and men alike meet here to spill blood in honorable combat. When you attack a town, they'll even have a defensive wall from which to fight you. All of this combined with one of the most impressive engines for diplomacy yet seen in a strategy game and combined with excellent sound and graphics should combine to make Hammer of the Gods a game worthy of the Allfather himself.